That was another one of the psalms that is in this section. Psalms of praise. We want to give you an opportunity. Um, We've been singing, we've heard stories, we've declared, we've prayed, and I want to give you an opportunity to speak of your praise and adoration for God as well. Psalms 136, which is also in this section, is what they call a reader response psalm. So we're going to have the words up on the board, and I will read the first section, and then you guys, you as the church family, if you read the section that is underneath, and it's pretty much one line, so I'm sure you're going to get it, I've got faith in you, it's pretty much one line, but this is Psalms 136, and and I want you, as you express it, as you declare it, it's one line, but it's, it's a powerful line. It's one that declares who God is. It's one that declares what He's done for you. It's one that declares how He relates and His primary motivation towards you and I. And so let's, let's give it a go. I'll read the first bit and you all respond when it gets to your turn. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. Give thanks to Him who alone does mighty miracles. Give thanks to Him who made the heavens so skillfully. Give thanks to Him who placed the earth among the waters. Give thanks to Him who made the heavenly light, the sun to rule the day, and the moon and stars to rule the night. He remembered us in our weakness, He saved us from our enemies. Give thanks to the God of heaven. That was Psalms 136. Another psalm in this section is Psalm 121. Psalm 121, it starts off as, there's a little caption, and you might see it in your Bibles if you have your Bible open. It says, a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. Now, I never really knew what this meant. Pilgrims ascending or people ascending to Jerusalem. And there's a whole section here in this last book of Psalms called Songs of Ascent. And it was only when we were in Israel in 2007, our our tour guide at the time was taking us through Israel. And as we were going up to Jerusalem, he explained to us what this was about. You see, Jerusalem was high up in the mountainous area of Judea. If you approach it from the east, you have the Dead Sea, which is the lowest point um, in in that area, even lower than the Mediterranean Sea. You have the Dead Sea, and then it goes up, the hill country goes up until it reaches the high point, and Jerusalem is right on top. So whether you're coming from the east, If you come from the west, you go through what they call the Valley of Jezreel, the Valley of Jezreel, and then as you hit the high country, you start going up, and Jerusalem is on top. So whether you approach it from the east, the west, the north, the south, at some point, on your way up to Jerusalem, ascending to Jerusalem, you're going to be climbing, you're going to be moving upward. And so it is at that point when when people would come to worship God, when they would come to Jerusalem for the festivals, that these songs of ascent, these praises of ascent were to be declared to God. And one of these songs of ascent is Psalms 121, and here's what it says. Listen to what it says. You can just imagine them as they're walking up the mountains to Jerusalem. I look to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. I can imagine sometimes the path, the way they were walking could have been rocky or or tricky. He will not let you stumble. 
The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forevermore. Isn't that a beautiful psalm? I'm going to invite Louise to come and join me. Um, Louise, in the context and reference of this psalm, she wants to share her song with us today. One of my most cherished memories is of standing high up in the Mount Aspiring National Park. And in every direction, as far as my eyes could see, were snow-capped mountains. It was mesmerizing. But as spectacular as those mountains are, how much greater is the one who made them? I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Do you sometimes find yourself wanting some help? I do, often. Pabst has been my church for many years, and the majority of you know our family situation. But for those who don't, my husband Michael and I have two sons. Matthew is 14 and Kevin is 11. Kevin is profoundly affected by autism, intellectual disability, and epilepsy. Kevin frequently experiences seizures and injuries, and I hate to see him suffer. But I take comfort from having a God whose very own son suffered. God knows what it is to see a beloved son suffer unfairly and ultimately die. Sometimes it's just enough help knowing that God understands. At other times, though, I want more than emotional support from God. Our day-to-day -day reality has happy moments, but it also has more than its fair share of stress, mess, noise, sleep deprivation, and hospital visits. And it's during these times that God's Spirit works through other people, prompting them to offer help. Just over a week ago, I was in hospital with Kevin yet again, and one of the aspects of caring for Kevin in hospital that is so challenging is that the vinyl floor surfaces are hard, so when he falls during a seizure, he hurts himself. And friends here at Papster had a spare roll of carpet, brought it over to us. Instantly, I felt my stress levels reduce. Others brought us meals, God has also given us a whole team of official supporters. And just last Sunday, we went in the Adra run. And I am immeasurably grateful for all the help that God provides us. God also helps me through his written word, the Bible. Joseph, Ruth, Esther, Moses, all these people walked closely with God and they all struggled significantly, some for many decades. I don't intend in any way to equate myself with these Bible greats, but I do take courage from these stories. But you know, if this was all I believed God had in mind for Kevin, if Kevin was to continue such a limited existence, I think that would be insulting to God. God is capable of so much more. And I believe Revelation when I read that one day there will be no more suffering. One day there will be no more tears. One day things will be made new. And I love to imagine Kevin in full health, running around, kicking a ball, climbing a tree, speaking, developing friendships, looking Jesus in the face. This is such a strong hope for me that it strengthens me here in the present. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Louise, thank you for sharing your story. And I know all of us here, we see God. 
in and through your journey and your story as well, you and your family. And so I just want us as a family to have a prayer with you. And as you listen to Louise's story, um, I know many of us also face different challenges, maybe similar, maybe ones that no one knows about or we haven't spoken of yet. Um, I want us to hang on to the hope that Louise has shared with us today. Our God is with us. Our God understands. Our God will restore things and we can look to him in our times of need. Let's pray together as we do this. Lord, we just thank you for yeah, being a God who understands, a God who knows. Thank you for being a God who loves and has determined in your love that things aren't going to be this way all the time. But Lord, even in these moments in this time, we see glimpses of your goodness, glimpses of your mercy, glimpses of restoration, glimpses of your kingdom. And so Lord, we, we live in that and, and we press towards that. And I just want to pray for Louise and her family. Be with Michael, be with Matthew, be with the extended family, Robin and Peter and the siblings as they all gather around to support and um, bring life and energy into Kevin's life and into his situation. Lord, we thank you for Kevin. We thank you for how much he has taught each and every one of us, how much he continues to reveal of your gracious love and character. And so, Lord, we just pray your blessing. And for everyone sitting here who maybe is experiencing or has a hurt or a pain that they just want to bring to you, we pray for that now. And know, Lord, that you are the almighty and powerful God who will restore all things. If not now, one day soon, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Louise. So church, it's pretty simple. Our take home today is share your song. Share your song. Where you've seen God, where he's blessed you, where you have opportunity, don't hold back. Share and declare of God's goodness. The last psalm of this section is Psalm 150. Many commentators feel we should actually consider the whole Psalm 146 all the way to 150 to be one psalm because it, it all declares the same thing, and that is this. I'd like to come up as we read this psalm. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heaven. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise His unequaled greatness. Praise Him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise Him with the lyre and the harp. Praise Him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord.